you know, and what better or worse time to like completely reconnoiter my art practice and make things that are terrifying to me than when like, everything's terrifying. When everything is terrifying. <laughs>[Excited to be here uh, with Dana at his show, winner of the 2021 Edge Award at the Swan Coach House. Uh, and so, the title of the show, that breeze that just keeps blowing over me, um, is a wonderful grouping of uh, paintings, or should we call them drawings? And we'll get back to that. Um, that he's worked on for the last year in a, in a very difficult time. Um, for all of us as we've come through, I hope, the pandemic. So uh, my name is Myra Green, and I'm an artist here in Atlanta, and I just want to take say hello. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Thanks so much for chatting with me. <laughs> I, I love chatting with Dana. Dana uh, and I showed studios at Atlanta Contemporary and um, have had many studio talks over the years, so I'm really excited to see the show because it's a big culmination of a long year. Yeah. <laughs> of a crazy year. A lot happened here this year. Yeah, a lot happened. So let's start with the work. Do you want to talk? I mean, let, how would you like to introduce it? Yeah, so it's a lot of things, and I don't really know how to classify it all, all the time. Okay. Um, I kind of call them paintings. I also kind of call them audiograph drawings. Um, and they're also kind of sculptural. I, 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 they, they exist in a lot of things for me because I don't ever really know what I'm doing. And so I just start doing a thing and then they turn out. And so this was, these turned out to be paintings. And that was a weird kind of experience to kind of realize that all of a sudden I'm making paintings for the first time as like, a, as like an artist like right. doing it. And so, yeah, it was, it was a kind of wild and experimental and this is what happened, which was fun and exciting and terrifying all at the same time. <laughs> sounds like the year. <laughs> yeah, sounds like the year. Um, so what's an audiograph drawing? I think that's a hard term. Yeah, so it's, I kind of made it up because okay. I can, because You're, it's, I can. Um, right. An audiograph drawing is a drawing made by a drawing machine that I built that I call the audiograph. And it basically, it's a kind of a wonderful ramshackle machine built from like old car parts and car jacks and, and it all hinges around this thing called a tactile transducer that converts audio signal to vibrations. Wait, stop there. So what? So where did you learn about this, dude, Dan Ducer? <laughs> the transducer. Transducer. Sorry, so I couldn't hear. <laughs> in my sculptural work for a long time, I've been working on, on activating people's bodies in a space using different forms of sensation, and okay. this transducer creates vibrations, um, which is a great way to activate somebody's body. So I've been using it to activate people's bodies for a long time, and so I'm familiar with this machine that takes audio signal. And vibrates. Okay. And so I figured that'd be a good way to like to start this thing that I, I wanted to document sound. That's kind of all of it comes down to a way to document sound. And I figured that there was some way to like connect a pen to it and make a mark. And uh -huh. then that turned into this big wild machine that's really rattly and clanky. That's got like a car jack and it moves and it spins, um, all in a way just on like a gesture to make like a gestural mark based on sound. And so that is what the audiograph is. Is it just? It's a machine that makes a gesture mark based on sound input. So I've seen. I've been lucky to see this machine, and it reminds me of old records and and how I never really understand how records have sound on them. It, it, is that a correlation or is that? It's kind of a correlation for sure. Just in, I mean, that's like sound, like takes physical shapes. Um, and, and so but using, it's, I didn't want to reinvent everything from scratch. So it's kind of based on like a record cutting machine, but more so a seismograph machine, mm. something that documents vibrations, which sound is, and a record cutting machine also documents vibrations. Okay. Instead of cutting it into a piece of vinyl, this scribes an interpretation of the waveform onto a piece of paper. Okay. So I'm, I'm hearing vibrations. Yeah, a lot of vibrations. A lot of vibrations. We're sitting on a vibration. Yeah, this bench vibrates using uh, the transducers. Older sculptures have invited you, to the, the viewer, to come sit on it. Mm -hmm. And this piece sits in the center of the gallery and invites you to sit on it. And so when that happens, when the transducer is working, what's happening there? So 
Well, all of these paintings are based on audio that I, through audio conversations I had over the past year, okay. mostly with people that I haven't been able to like engage with the way that I'm used to engaging with them, like mostly close friends, my mom, um, and, and, and then a couple complete strangers that just kind of made their way in the mix. Um, and so all of the audiograph drawings on all these paintings are from those conversations, which were about memory. Um, this bench plays the pieces of these recordings that are scribed onto these paintings. Mm -hmm. So you can feel physically the marks that are made onto the paintings. And that's what the bench is. And you can also hear, hear the audio directly. So you can kind of have a, a better idea of what is going on okay. in some kind of opaque work a little <laughs> bit. So that's interesting because, uh, so you're both looking at audio and then you're also feeling audio. So this is a sensorial show. Yeah, as most of my shows are. You know, I, I'm really interested in how we, like are aware of ourselves in a space or in a certain given context. Usually that mm -hmm. I kind of provide the context in this space. And then activating your body, I think is a really important way to kind of open up kind of how you're processing information and processing yourself in that, in that context and just being aware of yourself. Okay. So yeah, that's kind of how I use vibrations um, and kind of how I was thinking about making these works. So then, so there's this mark making and then there's like this whole, there's three or four more layers of information on this piece. There's this whole uh, transfiction of color that I think as celestial, I think of it as, I'm, I'm into my tarot right now, so you can <laughs> nix me on that. But, <laughs> the, <laughs> but things that are celestial or really soft and, and giving and, and fluctuate. Can you just talk about how you then apply color or think about color? Yeah, so kind of the process of like constructing these images, these paintings or whatever, I'm still like uncertain. I still feel guilty calling myself a painter because I don't think I am. I just, I've made these things. Mm -hmm. um, and so the process of these was I would contact, I would you know, get a hold of a friend and say, like, hey, I want to talk about memory. So all of these are based on memories. Um, and we would have a conversation where I would ask them a series of questions, but then that would usually prompt a conversation because we hadn't talked right. in months. And so the questions were, um, tell me about your earliest memory of feeling happiness. Um, and then the next one was, tell me about an early memory of you feeling sadness. And then the last one was, um, tell me about a, like a sense memory you have where when you, can, like, when you feel that sensation now, it just takes you back into that, that sense memory. Um, and so all of these um, paintings are kind of based on those memories of the people I was talking to. So I would interview them and, you know, they would end up being these long conversations and I would like usually f like in, in the conversation, I would go, oh, that, that, that is a beautiful memory. That is a beautiful image or that is like, it means something to them clearly. And it felt something to me. Mm. And I would like to start to think about like, oh, how can I do this? Um, and then in the studio, sometimes I would listen to them again, and sometimes I would just base it on my memory of the conversation. So kind of layers of remembering memories. Mm -hmm. um, and then I would like to start to free associate, like the shapes, you know, some of them are quite literal, like, you know, this, this painting right here, the memory was about fabric in motion. And so I just started dropping fabric on paper and tracing the outline until I found a compelling shape that I liked. Mm -hmm. Others of them were much more like just free association, like mark making, which is a thing that I'm like, just kind of trying to get more comfortable with, like the marks that I make, because it's mm -hmm. not, I don't really make marks in a lot of my work right. historically. So it was just kind of working through it and kind of like, yeah, this feels like the memory I'm thinking about right now. And then as I was working with color, I use spray paint. Um, partly because I'm comfortable with it and I wanted to make things I was, or use things I was comfortable with, but also they, you can get soft, undefined, like yeah. nebulous color fields. And I feel like when, you know, when we're remembering things, it's never crystal clear, especially like as we're remembering things, things start to coalesce from the ether. So the way that I thought about the color was kind of thinking about all the pieces and parts of a memory just before they coalesce as they're coming together. Hmm. Um, and so that's kind of how I was thinking about like the basic construction for like the first layer of these 
kind of compositions. Like, talk about these insane frames. Is that, that, I feel like that's the sculpture moment. Like, I oh, will, totally. would work until these things are perfect. Frames what? took me way less time than the Exactly, exactly. The that's what I remember. Well, and so I wanted to like, so when you frame a thing, it becomes a legit thing, right? Like, <laughs> and I was thinking about like how to like take these pieces of paper and make them feel like they're as important as the, like the audio and the stories that are like they represent, right? And so like giving them the frame was important. Um, and like long ago when I decided that they weren't gonna be square, I was like, well, let's, you know, make some wild frames. But it was also like the carrot at the end of the stick, like making the, like the drawings or paintings or whatever, the two dimensional pieces on paper was like wild and hard and experimental and exciting. But making the frames, like I can just turn my brain off and do that. That is like just, that let, makes me so mad. Let me loosen the wood shop and I'll do it. <laughs> um, and so, <laughs> but I think, but these things can't operate without them. No. Like they, they are part of the work. Yes. They're not holding the work. They are, they are inextricable from each other. Yeah, it's more than a container. Oh yeah. Um, they all sort of deal with this um, concept of nostalgia and I'm interested in how you have created this narrative with friends you know or people you, you cherish. But then I also think about you. Like, how, what is your nostalgia? When, and I'll just let's say all the questions at once. Like, when do you vibrate? Like, what, what is that sensorial me memory for you? Um, but I, I never, I didn't know there was like all these things. And I'm like, I know what they are. And I'm like, I don't know what they are. Um, because I feel like that, uh, the way you're talking about memory is something that is very distant, opposed to just like even our last conversation, which was, you know, a week ago. Yeah. So how do you how do you think about that? Well, I mean, there's a lot of questions there. Yeah. So kind of like <laughs> go through them. So I, you know, being in this year in this really you know weird and sad an isolating year, like I didn't really want to think about it mm. now, right? Like I was thinking about it constantly, all the time, till, and like a, in, a, in a bad way. And like, I kind of wanted to think about like way back, like way, way back. Mm. Um, and, and like, it seemed like a safer place in the beginning. And then as I worked there, I'm like, oh, it's not safer at all. It's just <laughs> older. Right, and, and, and what that gives is a little bit more perspective. And, and also, it, it's part of the foundation for how we're reacting to things now. Mm -hmm. Like how we dealt with joy and trauma and, and sensation younger has informed how we exist now and how we operate and how we work. Um, and so to answer like, the question about when I vibrate, like I've, I feel like I feel the most things like all the time, but it's all the small things. Like, huh. It's like remembering humming to a vacuum cleaner and like making like the tones slightly vibrate. Okay, that's like totally you. That's like all vibration. I mean, <laughs> yes, it is. Period. Full stop. But like kind of though, like the things I remember the most and think about the most are like the sensorial memories, like, mm. like the things that made my body feel a thing. Um, and like sometimes it's like the, like the, like, I'm a cancer, I'm a very emotional dude. And like, so sometimes the sensations are like the overwhelming emotions of a sensation. And those are the ones that like scare me the most and I don't think about as mm -hmm. much. But the ones I think about way more are like the little things, right? So I don't know, maybe this was an easier way to deal with the way back memories when they're somebody else's. Hmm. I don't know. There's like a whole self-portrait series in here. Just to, oh yeah, I know. <laughs> just just to so see you know. And there's and, a and a couple of them already exist. Oh oh well, I would love to see them because uh, I I think they would be interesting. I think because I think that that's an interesting. I have a very different relationship to memory, and I literally have told people like, um, don't worry, I will not remember high school, and I really don't. <laughs> like I just remember like a point of being like, oh, I have control and. 
agency over memory, right? Be, like I, I, somewhere in my brain, because memories are again, what you just, as you describe them, and I completely agree, this amalgamation and it's this force that you apply to them that makes them what they are. And so therefore you can make them as pliable or as real or as fake as you want them to be or truth, like truthful or not. Um, having memories that my mother, my mother tells me her memories. I'm like, that's not really what happened. And she's like, well, how do you know what happened? I was like, well, I was But does there. it matter? And that's the it's thing. A, I, it's a perspective, right? That's the thing I think about a lot. Like, how many of my memories actually happened? Yeah. The way that I remember them. And it's like, none of them, right? Because right. it's my response to those memories. So one of the reasons I, I wanted to go way back was, I, I, so I did this project um, at the Temporary Art Center last year where I invited people, like, I, bu I built the audiograph machine for this, and I invited mm -hmm. people to share memories that they don't often remember. And like in theory, like sciencey term insert here, is like every time we remember a memory, we're then remembering the remembering of the memory. We're replacing right. that with the most recent iteration. So trying to get one that you don't speak a lot, trying to get one that is less disrupted by the process of remembering was kind of the goal with that piece and a little bit of the goal with this one. I didn't want them to be something from last week where you're like, I remember every beat of that conversation. I wanted the impression of that and then also how it made you feel then, but then in the describing of it, how it makes you feel now. Mm -hmm. So a bunch of these, you know, there's like the memory and then there's people reacting to have just saying the memory and just remembering the memory. Right. And so at the end of all of them, there's kind of this little like, kind of like, like loop back to like, oh yeah, I, you know, I was, I was over the moon. Like it's, it's always a commentary, which right. you never think about in the moment. But that's all retrospective. Right. And so that like, these are less portraits about a memory, but more a, like a portrait of remembering that memory. It's a document of the remembering. So I know that you've done a lot of installations in town, um, but this feels a little bit different. Yeah. And um, supported, funded. Yeah, that was amazing. So tell, tell me about the last year and the experience preparing for the show and this experience. Well, it's been great to kind of have the support of the EDGE Award and the Ford Arts Foundation um, to like just know that I have a year to do a thing. And then uh, there was a residency at Hambridge as part of it. So that gave me time to think about a thing. And that's where I really kind of like pulled apart the ideas I had going into it and kind of just goofed around. And through the okay. goofing, like, I started making things like this. Um, and so like having that time at Hambridge and then the support to just not feel the pressure to make the same thing for the next show that I've had was awesome. And knowing that I could come in this space and like have like a solo show was exciting. And it was like motivating to like, let's, let's do it. Let's go all in and completely make something new and terrifying and exciting. Um, I'm gonna take the time and say thank you, Dana, for uh, a beautiful show, a beautiful entree into the art world. Uh, I try to go see art once a week and it was exciting to come see a friend and see that he's succeeding and making beautiful work. Um, congratulations on the award, on the Edge Award. Awesome, well and thank you. Yeah, whatever. Well, thanks so much for coming and this conversation and all the other ones we've had and for coming and, and taking a look at it. I think we will have a few more. My stools came. I, you're coming back to my garage. There's, it's, it's like happy sitting time in my garage. Awesome, perfect. <laughs> We're leaving that in. Thanks, Myra. <laughs>